Hello, welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today I am taking a quick look at this new interest protocol. Now, what is interest protocol? It says here that it's a, uh, a fractional reserved borrowing platform. Let me see where, where, where did I see this here? Uh, it's a fractional reserve banking protocol. So think of like two things in one. So think if in the, in the space, you can think of this kind of as like a, like a over collateralized stable coin and compound put together. Okay. So it's pretty interesting. I think, uh, I think it's definitely worth talking about and covering and looking at whether or not, you know, it's a good, it's going to survive or it's going to pass the test of time. That's, that's up to time to, to decide. Right. So let me go through and explain to you. I have a flow chart for you to explain how this thing works, but if you want, you can, you can come and read this medium article and you can also go to their docs. Their docs is pretty good and they explain a lot of things inside here. And there's some stuff that I won't cover. Like I won't go deep into the math as usual. I'll just explain to you basically how this protocol works. So let's go over to the flowchart and I will go through the system of how, how people, different actors can deal with this protocol. Okay. So here we are and here we have dollar bill. Dollar bill is our first actor and he's going to come to interest protocol and he's going to mint himself some USDI. So he's going to supply $100 worth of USDC and get $100 worth of USDI. Now you'll understand why he might want to do that in the future as I go through things. So basically one to one, right? And anytime he wants, he can come back with his uh, USDI and redeem it for one USDC. So this is the peg mechanism, right? So this will be used against the liquidity pools out in the market in order to maintain peg, right? From other actors can do this as well. They can buy low and sell high or buy, uh, sell high and buy low and so forth. You know, the basic uh, stablecoin uh, peg maintenance mechanic. Okay. So anytime he wants, he can redeem his USDI for USDC and anybody else who has USDI can redeem for USDC as well. Okay. Now here's his brother, Boosted Bill. Boosted Bill likes his, uh, you know, his crypto coins. So he comes with ETH, right? And he supplies ETH to the protocol. Like now this is like kind of like compound or Aave, right? So he just supplies a hundred USDC, a hundred US dollars worth of ETH. And then he can borrow some amount of tokens, right? Now, usually collateral factors are like around 60, 70, 80. It doesn't say in the docs what the collateral factor of, of the uh, different coins are that they're going to support, but I'm just going to assume that he borrows $60, right? So instead of borrowing dollar bills, USDC from the protocol like that he would on Compound or Aave, he actually borrows USDI. So the, the protocol mints up more USDI and sends that to him. Okay, so now he, these, these, these USDI are under collateralized because there's 160 out in circulation, but there's only 100 US dollars worth of USDC in the protocol. Okay, now after some time, you know, this is, this is a, the, the interesting part. It doesn't use utilization to, to pay interest and to, to calculate utilization. It uses some math, some crazy stuff. Like you, you can, if you're geeky and you can, you can go in here and dig deep, but basically it takes the supply of USDC in here and divides it by the circulating supply of USDI and increases the the APY accordingly. So basically the, the 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 worse the collateral ratio gets, the worse that these are backed, frac like that's what they say it's fractional backed, right? So the less that these are backed by USDC, the higher the APY to borrow them, right? So if he were to have borrowed 30, then he would pay less because you know the, the circulating supply of USDI would be lower, right? So when he does decide to pay off his debt, he would, you know, pay like, so let's say he, he accrues five, five USDI of debt and he pays it back. Right. And it burns those tokens and then, but gives him $4. Okay. For USDI. Now this is a rebase. Okay. So he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to come and claim it. It's just his balance of USDI will go up. Now, if he has taken these USDI and put them in some liquidity pool somewhere, then he will, the rebase will go into that liquidity pool, right? So 
you get it. It's pro rata across all USDI holders when he repays his debt, okay? Now, I think that's pretty interesting, okay? Now, let's compare that to what happens on Compound because you're thinking, oh, you know, this is this is dangerous, right? Like, there's a, only $100 in here, but there's $160 out circulating, right? And uh, what happens, like, on, on, on Compound is is similar, right? So he would put, they would put in USDC and they would get back uh, this compound USDC, and which is, you know, they would get roughly one to one, right? But it, this is a value accruing token, so it goes up in value. But this is like basically the idea, right? So they would get back some equivalent amount of of, of tokens that are equal to his uh, USDC inside the position. And then someone would come again with 100 US dollars worth of ETH and borrow 60 of those USDC, right? And then there would only be 40 USDC sitting in, in this contract. Whereas here, there are still the 100 sitting inside there. So you can see automatically, like assuming that, you know, he, he takes these, uh, this USDI, he can still redeem for his entire 100, mind you, without this one, this single percent, right? This one. So he could still, at, at this time, he could still redeem his 100 USDI and pull out 100 USDC from, from the protocol. Whereas in this case, he would only be able to redeem for 40 USDC because the rest is being utilized and is not withdrawable, okay? Now, let's say he sees that and he takes his USDI and he redeems it before dollar bill. So he takes 60 of this USDC out and now he has 60 USDI. Now he can't redeem, right? So that's not great, right? However, he does have $100 worth of USDC or of ETH in, in here as collateral that eventually he's going to want to buy, put these USDI back into the system, right? To In order to, uh, he was going to have to buy them basically in order to, to get back his collateral, right? Because if he if he's pulled out, if he's gotten rid of them, then for this USDC, he's going to have to get 60. So he could then become a loner. He could then mint it by adding this USDC back to the system and get the USDI. Or he could go to the liquidity pool and use the USDC to buy USDI, right? So anyways, he's going to have to put it back in order to get these. And then dollar bill can come out. So they both have that risk of dollar bill not being able to get his USDC out at some point and that's assuming there's only two players here right but this one has a lot more risk like this this has a risk as soon as he borrows but this has risk only after he borrows and then redeems right that he won't be able to pull out all of his money at that time okay so this is an improvement in my opinion okay this does make things better okay now of course, there are still liquidations. So there are still liquidators looking at this. Now, this protocol has decided to use two oracles. So, and it's going to compare the two oracles. So it's going to have a main oracle. And then this oracle is not going to be considered valid if it deviates from the other oracle for a long time. Now, I assume they're going to use Uniswap first because it's free. And then uh, the chain link when, when they need it. Okay. Um, you can look into the, this a little bit more. Now, a key thing here is that they're only going to be doing partial liquidations. So they will only liquidate what needs to be liquidated to, to make dollar bill or boosted bills position healthy again, okay? Which is good, right? <clears throat> so less liquidations, less market selling and so forth, okay? Now, let's assume uh, after some time, this protocol is like, hey, let's, let's allow Caesar token to, uh, to be used as collateral. And Caesar token allows you to vote. So when a boosted bill does supply it as collateral, it will he will have the option to delegate his voting power to some address. So he could use his own wallet or some other wallet he controls, right? So he could be like, I want to stake my Caesar in here. I want to borrow US die. But while I'm staking it in here, then I want to delegate the power to my wallet so that I can still vote on the Caesar protocol, right? Or whatever protocol token happens to be supported, right? Now, last thing, there is the, the governance token of uh, interest protocol, right? 
I think it's IPT token. And this will basically govern this system and allow people, it'll like allow for the addition of uh, further collaterals. It'll allow for the like, changing this APY curve somewhat, right? Uh, the protocol fees, cause like he gave $65 back, but he only like, so he gave an extra $5, but the protocol kept $1, right? <clears throat> so he only gave him $4 and there's a graph and in the docs, it looks like this, which kind of shows that, you know, the, the, the borrow APY is always higher than the, than the, 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 the payout to the, to the suppliers. Right. And then everything, it basically says like these guys will have the ability to, to make lots and lots of changes to the protocol. Everything will be run by DAO governance vote. Okay. So that pretty much covers this protocol. Uh, you can, you know, dig a little deeper, dig docs, go to the docs, go to the discord, ask questions and see if you're interested in this protocol. I hope this has been useful and I hope you're interesting and so forth. And thank you so much for watching. So goodbye.